Our flight plan was a relatively complicated one, and it depended very much on uh, the launch of both vehicles occurring very precisely on time. see the Atlas Agena as it lifted off, but we were informed of its progress by our spacecraft test conductor from the ground, very encouraged to find out that its launch was on time and its orbit was a good one. Periodically during the first orbit, uh, we were informed as to the status of the Agena when we found it was actually in precisely a 160 nautical mile circular orbit. We were, of course, extremely relieved. The launch itself has to be described as perhaps one of the greatest thrills that can ever be encountered by a pilot. The launch vehicle performance was flawless. We had a slight amount of vibration during the early phases of the flight until we became supersonic and the ride was extremely smooth from that time on. Uh, at staging, time when we separate from the first stage of the launch vehicle and ignite the second stage, we encountered a uh, small fireball. This was reported uh, for the first time in Gemini 6. It's apparently uh, a function of the individual characteristics of the timing of, of the staging sequence. Uh, this amounts to flying through a little bit of your own the exhaust from your own second stage uh, rocket engine ignition. Uh, at this time, we felt that we uh, had some deposit on the window as a result of this uh, small fireball. This was again reported uh, by Sharon Stafford on Gemini 6. Uh, it was intended to maneuver the spacecraft immediately after second stage engine cutoff to the correct velocity vector to get in the proper orbit. The Gemini launch vehicle, however, put us in uh, a very precise orbit and no maneuver was required with the exception of the uh, five foot, foot per second maneuver used to separate from the second stage. The maneuver sequence uh, involves nine separate maneuvers to place the spacecraft in the best possible position for the terminal phase of the rendezvous. trajectory to the Aegean until about uh, 1.7 miles at which time Neil began the manual uh, visual braking phase. It's very easy to maneuver around the vicinity of another spacecraft, easier than we had expected it to be. The docking was performed uh, over the, the uh, Rose Knot Victory off the coast of South America and uh, so that uh, data could be received on the ground during the time of 
the contact. This, however, was just at sunset, and you can observe here uh, that the sun is very low off on the right side, right horizon, and illuminating the right side of the Agena, while the left side and docking cone are in darkness. We stopped at approximately two feet out from the docking cone and waited until the uh, Capcom at, on the RKV told us that he had good telemetry, and uh, which took about two minutes, and then uh, docked at a closing velocity of approximately three quarters of a foot per second, approximately nine inches per second, plus or minus three. There's docking contact, essentially, at night. Uh, as you can see, out my window, it was quite dark. We saw no uh, electrical discharge or sparks at the time of contact as the spacecraft touched the whisker. After seven hours, elapsed time, incident occurred. Dave reported the spacecraft was diverging. And looking at our attitude indicator, we found uh, that our attitudes were indeed changing in yaw and roll. We attempted to bring the combination uh, under control and reduce the rates. Then the problem again uncovered itself, and the rates began to increase uh, to the point where we felt uh, the structural integrity of the combination, since they were joined only at three points uh, at the nose, was in jeopardy. We uh, reduced the rates to a point where we felt the, the undocking could safely be performed without uh, a chance of recontact between the vehicles, since there was rotation in essentially all directions. We wanted to be assured that we could get far enough around away from the Gina before uh, some recontact between the vehicles was was encountered. Uh, of course, we were extremely reluctant to give up the flight at that point, but the uh, decision to re-enter in a condition like this with our re-entry control system activated is decided before flight when you can calmly and coolly decide what the best situation, or best, best reaction to any given emergency might be and uh, seem reasonable to uh, agree with uh, the ground recommendation at that point and prepare for a recovery. The Retrofire, fortunately, was located eight, close to seven, uh, Kano, Nigeria six, station, five, and uh, four, we were able to hear the people in Houston two, counting down one, for Retrofire. retrofire. The uh, view out the window, again, is uh, a spectacular one. The view of uh, the ionized sheath, of very high temperature gases coming uh, off the spacecraft, the view of the spacecraft retro, retro adapter burning up some several miles behind the spacecraft. I wish I had more time to look out during that time period, but I thought it was imperative to stick pretty close to the steering commands uh, given on the panel. After uh, after we put our drug chute out at uh, 50,000 feet, uh, Dave read out the, the latitude and longitude. We're very close to what uh, what we had expected. Uh, the landing sequence worked uh, completely the way it was supposed to. The parachutes all worked fine. Uh, splashed down, uh, somewhat of a jolt, and. Uh, started concerning ourselves with recovery. Uh, we were informed 
uh, both in orbit and uh, by the aircraft after we got on the water that the USS Mason was uh, approximately three hours from our spice down time and uh, on the way and also shortly thereafter two uh, SA-16 amphibians came over and uh, we didn't expect them to land because of the sea state but they did circle and uh, there was quite a group out there for a while. Uh, finally uh, over the horizon after we had opened our hatches and had a good rest there uh, we saw the USS Mason coming full bore and I'll bet that's the fastest that destroyer has ever traveled in its 22 years of life. Uh, they came alongside and uh, it was a matter of about four or five minutes from the time we got to the, the bow as, he, as the ship passed by that we were on board and the spacecraft was on board and I want to say that that was an extremely professional operation. Those people knew what they were supposed to do and they performed it uh, rapidly and extremely efficiently.